This is Gene Adam, former lead singer of Iced Earth. Be sure to subscribe to Podcast and Stone. And don't forget, join our community on social media. Metal lives. Ladies and gentlemen of the Iced Earth community, welcome to Podcast in Stone, the only podcast 110,000% dedicated to Iced Motherfucking Earth. Today I'm joined as always with the incomparable Chuck Hoskins. Today we're going to have a bit of a break from the uh, side project episodes. Don't get me wrong, love a load of those albums that we've covered in those side project episodes. I'm sure Chuck did as well. But today we're bringing back what matters most, which is Iced Earth. You know, Back to the Future. He goes, Molly, we gotta go back. Go back where? Back to Iced Earth episodes. Makes sense, I think. It makes sense. So, Chuck, how you doing, my friend? It's a good day, man. It's kind of a rainy day here in USA, Ohio. So it's a good day to sit inside and uh, listen to some Iced Earth and uh, talk about it with friends and share our thoughts of some of our favorite songs. The Stu Block era is very special. It's, uh, we love Stu. The, the albums that have come forth since him, it just been awesome. And I, I've listened to them twice each over the last couple of days, and you, you forget how good they are. And I can't wait to talk with you about them. And if you're watching this, we are going to get back to Pyrame soon and, and some of the other ones. We just wanted to, to come in and talk about Ice Earth. That's the reason why this podcast exists. We love talking about these songs, and I enjoy it. So can't wait to talk about our top 10 Stu Block era songs. Yeah, man. It's, uh, you know, this, this, this kind of Stu Block era, it was the comeback the band needed. You know, like, like we've said in numerous episodes of when we were regarding Stu Block, it, he, he brought this youthful fire back into the band that was a necessary part of this rejuvenation, the rebirth, you know, and it, these three albums, it, it's, it was, I can't e- emphasise how difficult it was to pick 10 songs from this era. I mean, like, I, I I would say Matt Barlow would be a harder era to pick 10 songs from. That would be very hard. Um, but, like, still, even with three albums, like, there's so many great songs across these three albums that it was very difficult. But, We've done it. We finalised our lists, and I'm going to ask you, Chuck, to kick us off with your number ten. Okay, and just to kind of for everybody listening, we did consider Ancient Curion, and since that's a live album, it's kind of you know everybody's got their classics, and I believe me, I love Damien and some of the other ones on that album. But we decided to just keep it studio, and we also disqualified. Uh, the extra tracks for Dystopia, which are Mob Rules and The Trooper and the uh, Dante's Inferno that we absolutely love. It's our favorite version of that song. Uh, not always the popular opinion, but I don't care, and neither does Jason. It's my favorite version of Dante's Inferno, and uh, there you have it. So it, it's that's, so if you're watching this and you wonder why we didn't include The Ancient Curion, we did not forget about that album. That's a tremendous live album, and... Uh, so this is our top 10 from the Stu Block Studio albums. So my number 10 is from Dystopia. My number 10 is probably one of the songs that I love Stu's voice on the most, and it's End of Innocence. And I, I love his delivery, and I love how how pure his song. The song is a beautiful song, and his voice is amazing in it. And... I love it. To me, it's an absolute highlight of dystopia. So for me, number 10 is End of Innocence. Yeah, man. Like, what, what, what can I say about that song that hasn't really been said? The, the, thing that grab, the thing that grabs me about that song in particular is that it's real. Like, it's from, it's from like, real emotions from because of real events in his life. And that's what makes that song powerful. And yeah, uh, I totally agree. It's fantastic. Cool choice, man. Number my 10 no- for me. My number 10 is also from Dystopia. My number 10 uh, is V. Oh. And uh, it's, to me, it's the, um, probably the, when it comes to out, outright, just rocker kind of 
song. Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's not it's not super heavy, but it's got this really kind of crunching kind of just just crunching like main rhythm section, and then you've got the great great vocals over the top. Stu is immense. You know, like the bit where it's just like a rising up from the fire. Yeah, that whole that whole vocal that whole melody is just incredibly singable, and it's just the whole song is just really really catchy, and I just love all, the whole the whole thing. It's very catchy, metal, and riffy, and it's absolutely the things that I like in my I Star songs. Yeah, man, and uh, there's a lot. I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of like there's some triplet modes in there that we we all love from Schaefer and. Yeah, Stu, Stu's vocals are the cherry on top, though, man. Like, um, like the, what what he does in this song just is just crazy good, and it's it's even it's even better live as well, as you know you you, you see on like Curion and stuff like that, and going to live shows. It's just that's I I would like to think that's still going to be a staple live for years to come because it's just such a great great tune. You know, we we talk everybody bitches about their favorite bands about the. The uh, set lists. There's so many great Ice Star songs that you know no one's ever going to be happy. You could do a 65 song set list, and you'd be like, um, "Schaefer, you left out Mystical End." Dang it! Oh yeah, so, I'll, I'll I'll be shy. I'll be screaming in his face like, "Where's Mystical End?" Because it's like, yeah, favorite song off of Storm Rider, but I digress. Okay, so uh, great choice, by the way. Um, my number nine is from the Plagues of Babylon album. It is the title track. And I know this is a song that we kind of disagreed at when we did the uh, the discussion of it. I love the slow build-up. I love how it just builds to it, and then it takes off. Um, if you've watched any of these episodes, you know that Plagues is my favorite Stu era album, and it still is, probably even more so now. And I, I love the song. Um, there's something about that album and I love the tone of his voice. It's, it's a little bit less produced than dystopia. And I kind of like that. And I like the evolution and we'll get into incorruptible, but I thought it was a nice step. They didn't say here's um, dystopia part two. They took it to another level, but still kept that traditional ice star sound. So plagues of Babylon is a great riff song and Stu sounds phenomenal on it. Number yeah, nine, me, Plagues of Babylon. See, for me, like Plagues of Babylon, like in, in, if we if we're talking like just the tone, the tone of that record is just dark and evil and just heavy as fuck. For me, for me as well, like for me as a drummer, like to me that's 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 the I Surf drum album because I think, um, I think uh, what the fuck's the guy's name? I forgot his name. Uh, the, the fucking drummer, <laughs> the, the drummer, the drummer. Uh, is it Alf Rock? I can't think of it right now. Yeah, I can't think. It's it's completely left my brain. But yeah, the, the, yeah I think the drummer on that record is just is is what it was. Is he's like the glue that holds it all together. It's just his drumming, his drums are immense on that record for one. And that's that's the first thing I think of when I think of Plagues of Babylon. The, the song, I mean, is there where he goes down, like the snare. The snare sound is massive. Yeah. And like you said, though, I just think. Uh, with with Stu with Stu's vocals, particularly on on that song, like that, uh, I think um, I think he he found he found his voice for the band on on Blaze of Babylon. Would you agree? In terms, well, of I don't his... know that he found his voice, but I think every time uh, a songwriting duo do another album, there's a comfort level that's reached. And okay, we talked about that with, with our episodes. You know, the more we did episodes, you always get more comfortable with people. So. Is it Raphael? Yeah, I think the so. Drummer? What the fuck is Raphael that? Sins or something like that? I don't think. I don't know. I, I, I think it's bad. Raphael. I feel really bad so, now. Apologies. So to, number to my number nine is <laughs> Plagues of Babylon title track. Pretty strange because my number nine is also from Plagues of Babylon, but my number nine is The Culling. Oh, nice! And I I love this song. I think it's great. I love I love the the, the actual just like cadence and harmonies that um, that Stu does. It's it's kind of like it's kind of like the way he sings it. It's kind of baritone, but it goes a bit lower than baritone. It sounds quite just a bit dark. 
and a bit kind of like moody. I don't know if that's the right word to use, but do you know what I mean? Yeah. I just I just think it's just um, like the the way I'm trying to like gauge this list for me is is the quality of the song and the quality of Stu's performance and how and putting them together and then you know how much do I love this song and yeah number nine the culling is just for me it's just it's just really really good and I think Stu it's one of the best songs on on Plagues of Babylon for me when it comes to Stu's vocals which is fantastic that's awesome good to hear Plagues getting some love my number eight goes back to the Dystopia album uh, one of my favorite tracks on there is Dark City um, God, I, I, he sounds amazing on it. I, I even love the intro that he does live to it. it. It's just, it's everything I want in a Stu song. It sounds great. Um, Dystopia is a tremendous album. I can't believe it's my least favorite of the three, but I still love it. Um, I know it's your not at all. Um, <laughs> um, so Dark City is my eight. I have a feeling it's going to be coming up later on your list. Yeah, man, Dark City, man. This this those fucking pterodactyl scream steps. A sacrifice. That's so good, man. I, I I what I love about that song song as well is that it's so like traditionally not traditional ice surf like that. The opening kind of guitar twang. It's got this guitar, bang 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 bang. Like the, the opening, like the opening guitar is just so so different to what what we're usually used to for ice surf, and that's what I thought. What what makes that song that much more enjoyable is that you're not getting what you're used to you're getting something a bit different but then it kicks into this just crazily good uh just thrashing just fun is that is that a good word to use fun for i stuff <laughs> i just think it's a fun song to sing along to i always it's, enjoy it i always have fun with it's it it's got like great melodies in it and yeah one of my favorite songs off that, that album in particular so yeah that's my um, Good. that's a great choice man like Dark City great song my number 8 we've already spoke about it it's End of Innocence from Dystopia ah. and I've already kind of spoke about like how I find it's just out of, the, out of the whole album I feel this is the song that he's the most natural at like in terms of like it's real it's real passion it's real emotion in it and it speaks to me a lot like I'm I, like especially right now with you know, you know what I'm dealing with right now in my life not many people else do but it kind of relates to that and it's kind of real it's feeling real to me right now and that's what I find beautiful about that song as well and it's kind of like a half ballad in my mind as well which I find really cool because it, 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 it's it, kind of soft at the beginning and it just kicks in with like Troy's guitar and it just goes in at the end it's just really epic towards the end and that's just it's just a really well written song it's I think that was the first song they wrote uh, John and Stu wrote together as well Okay. Which is cool. I think I heard that. So yeah, yeah. End of Innocence, man. Like, love it. I love that song so much. Nice. My number seven will be the first time that we talk about the Incorruptible album. Uh, my number seven is Black Flag, and Black Flag was a song that didn't super grab me through its first listen because there's so many huge songs on that album. But just the, the way the guitar comes in, and of course, the video helps. I mean, the video is one of the coolest things that I stars have, have done. And I just love just the tempo of it. And then when it kicks in and just Stu sings his ass off in it, and it's just a, a cool, well-written, melodic, catchy song. And to me, it's a highlight of Incorruptible, and it sounded great live. Um Black Flag, number seven. And if you haven't seen the video, go watch it. It's It makes you like that song just a little bit more even. So Black Flag is my first selection off Incorruptible. That's a really good choice, man. That's a great choice. Like you said, the video, the, the video is just like epic, right? And what I find cool about the video as well is that the, the story behind that video is even cooler. Like you know, uh, Luke Luke told us about the the, you know, the whole goings on behind you know making that video, right. and, how, and how it was like a nightmare in some regards. Like it's just cool to hear like some of the behind the scenes stuff as well. And I think I think that's the perfect song they could have chose to make a video for. 
Yeah, who doesn't like pirates, you know, man? Who doesn't like pirates? Like, it's just fucking cold as hell. A, a side note that I always kind of laugh when I hear about the Black Flag video or if I watch it. When it, the day it came out, I saw the thumbnail that it was out. And it just looked, to me, the thumbnail looked like somebody had just made a pirate video. So I didn't watch it for like a month. <laughs> and then I heard people talking about it. I'm like, what? And then I went and watched it. I was so mad at myself. So oh, man. I tell you what, though, <laughs> I will... I, there was no announcement of the video. It just popped up one day. I will tell you one thing about about Black Flag that I haven't really mentioned. I, I didn't mention it in our retrospect. Is that the uh, the vocal the, vo- the falsetto uh, betray betray banishment that falsetto before it goes into the um, into the verse. That's my favorite Stu Block falsetto, and it's so wow. fun. Pick one, huh? Uh, it'd be super hard to pick one. It's so fun to like sing along to that because you know what I'm like. I try to do the falsettos. I do them badly, Spe- but I try. Speaking uh, of <laughs> falsettos, I now have both of the Into Eternity, so that's something that we got to get to. Oh man, great records, so, man! Great albums. You know, I'm sur- I, I'm not a fan of that type of music typically, but man. I can't wait to talk about it. It's totally, good. <laughs> some awesome stuff on there. So, Black Flag, my number seven. My my number seven is also from uh, Incorruptible. Uh, this choice, this choice uh, was anointed by the Crown. So, this choice is a Seven Headed Whore. Uh, man, man, I tell you, man, this what a way to tease an album. Like they put this out first, I'm just like, whoa! <laughs> like it's just, just in your face, Slayer, eat your heart out, holy shit! And what I love about it, this, like, what I love about this song is just the way Stu tackles it. Like he has this new kind of like different approach vocally, and it just it just works so well. And it's the chorus is so singable. Like I, I always sing along to it. I love this song. It's just. Classic thrashing old school iced earth like proper sound like this could have been on the debut album with Gene and it would be fine. <laughs> like it's so cool, I fucking love it. That's my number seven. It's quite what iconic. Is- it's quite ironic because it's my number seven. And it's actually got seven in the title. <laughs> that was unintentional. I didn't mean for that to happen. <laughs> I'm not going to say nothing about your choice just yet. Okay. So my my number six is my sleeper of the list, and I'm 100% positive it's not going to be on your list. Um, mine goes back to Plagues of Babylon. My question, my uh, my song has a question mark at the end. It's called the end. This song, it, I, I like to play a game when I buy a new album. I listen to the album, and then I pick a song that's my first, my favorite off the list. The end was my favorite after one listen to uh, Plagues. It's not now, but um, I just love the tempos in it. I love how catchy it is, and it, it's always spoke to me. So the end, if, you, if you're watching this and that's not in your regular rotation, give the end the seven, eight minutes it's due. I love this song. So uh, Plagues of Babylon, the end for number six. Cool man, I, 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 that song never, never grabbed me, even to this day. I've, I've, I've listened to the album many times since it came out, uh, and yeah, that song still never really resonated with me. So, yeah, um, that's cool, man. I, I wish I could love it like you do, but uh, it's what it is. What it is, man. Uh, no, my, number my, six. my number six Ooh. is from Plagues of Babylon, <clears throat> and it is uh, Plagues of Babylon. Because uh, I I still think from a, from a you know you I, it's uh, fuck's sake get my words out properly Jason do it do it right, okay so this may confuse people but um, on the surface I could skip this song right but for, 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 for but I'm putting it on this as a top ten Stu Block era song at number six like pretty much like midway almost is solely because I think Stu sounds really good on the song. For me, he he's he's the reason why I love this song is is him. 
like obviously I, I mentioned before that like, I love the whole drums on it the drums are just great as well um, but nothing musically really aside from the drums really grabbed me I think Stu, Stu is the reason why this song is good I know that may sound people might go unsubscribe dislike dislike it is what it is I don't care but yeah, yeah, but yeah I just think I'm on a on Stu Box performance alone this, this song deserves to be in, in the conversation and that's why it's my number six Ooh. And that, that's what, you know, I watch a lot of like top 10 lists and, you know, rankings and stuff. And it's fun to see how many different people totally differ from your opinion. That To me, that's what's fun. And me and you very rarely agree on anything. So that's, I think that's I all. think we agree with a quite a lot of things considering. Yeah, we do. But, you know, certain albums and stuff we disagree on. There's a few songs that we disagree on. So my number five. Is a song that you've mentioned before. Uh, goes back to Incorruptible. It's Seven Headed Horror. And I'll elaborate more on what you were talking about. I remember the artwork to the song. And it's kind of purgatory ish, you know, with that, the woman on there. And it, you, you hear it and you just jaw drop, you know, it's like, holy, holy heavy metal Batman. It's just. <laughs> Stu sounds amazing. The guitar is just thrashy. It's it's, it's slayery, but with good vocals, and it's catchy and heavy and just tremendous. Um, I hope it sticks around for a while live, whenever live presumes. Um, to me, it's definitely a highlight of the Incorruptible album, and it, to me, it's one of the things that makes Incorruptible so diverse. You got the the, the ups and the downs, the tempos and you know the book end of the of the epics and uh it's one of the most well-rounded albums there is so seven-headed whore to me is a huge part of that my number five that's cool man uh i'm, I'm just gonna preface this now we're in i mean i'm in my obviously you just done your your number five my top five to me to me these are the best of the best these are for me anyway uh the best songs Stu has, has sung has sung uh, on basically um, yeah my number five is from Plagues of Babylon number five is Cthulhu uh, probably yeah probably my favourite song off of Plagues uh, it's incredibly singable I love how they really kind of pictured the mythology behind Cthulhu they've really done their research and it paints a picture that when I listen to that song, I, I, my brain comes up with images of what they're singing about, and that's what you want from music. You want to, you, you want your imagination to go crazy, and that, that's why I love this song because I, I think Cthulhu is a cool kind of mythological being anyway, in that kind of H.P. Lovecraft kind of story. And yeah, I just think they now the story, and mate, like, it's Stu sounds the best on this song from that album like for me like it's just so singable so diverse in his vocal delivery as well it's just great what a song man it's so good that's my cool. number five I, I don't have anything to say about that just shut okay my number four goes back to the plagues of Babylon it's democide and Democide's a funny song for me because it's got that intro that really has nothing to do with the song. That dun, 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 that you know, when I hear it, it doesn't pull me in. But if you wait through that kind of that 15, 20 second intro, and then it, it goes off into the riff, and then it's like, yes. And it, it's so heavy. And I, I love Stu's vocals on this. This is just a great collaboration with everybody. Sounds great in the band. Um, the guitars and uh, it, to me, it's. I think nobody gives this song enough credit. It's, it's an amazing song. It's super fast and heavy. The intro is so weird. It has nothing to do with the song. I, I mean, I'll, I'll get your thoughts on that in a minute. Um, it's, it's such a cool song. I love it. So for me, Democide is number four. Yeah, demo side. I agree that the intro is a bit long, but when it gets into the uh, when it gets to that bit, it's it's full throttle, 
Um, for yeah. me, for, for that song, if, um, if you just want, want me to just like brush my little opinion on it, we've already spoke about these songs numerous times. But uh, for me, like I, I still think for me, uh, the highlight of this of this song in particular is is Luke Ableton's bass guitar. His bass guitar sounds massive on this song. Like the bits I'm talking about, where he goes into the galloping, like this, the, the bass guitar sounds like boom, boom, like it's proper like fucking massive bollocks in it. <laughs> massive balls like it's so good um i've kind of like i kind of lost my luster for this song over, over the years um i used to really like it. it used to be when i first heard the album it used to be one of my favorites but i've kind of like likened uh other songs from the album a bit more and uh yeah that album's kind of fell down the pecking order that song sorry has, has fell down the pecking order so um i, I like it's full throat or assault uh, but I would disagree. I wouldn't say it's it's one of the best two block songs. Fair enough. That's, that's just me. Uh, so what are we on four? We're on four, aren't we? Yeah, you're number four. Man, my number four. I feel like everyone's forgot about it. It's not on the vinyl. It pisses me off that it's not on the vinyl. It's from Dystopia. It's Sonic and Green. Fuck me! I love this song, Chuck. Jesus Christ! It's... Why is it not on the final? I'm sorry, headphone users, but you probably died then. Um, but yeah, <coughs> my word, man, this song is 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 this song is so good. Like everything about it, the riffs, Stu's vocal performance, uh, probably the most singable he is on on Dystopia. Like if I want to sing along to a song, I put on this song. Like it's so singable. Um, if you've seen the film. It makes the, the song even better because you you know the film. So it's just like, man, this song is so good. Why it, why it was only stuck to a limited edition of the album, I don't know. Why it's not on the vinyl, I don't know. But I feel like people forget it exists. It's the same with Iron Will as well. Iron Will is kind of forgotten. But like, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't understand the decision making. Why it just wasn't just on the album like normal. Because it's like... It's better than Days of Rage. They could have took Days of Rage out and put Silent Green in. Because Silent yeah. Green is like head, heads over heels better. You know, yeah, th I know so this is good. something that if you've seen our episodes, we've talked about this a few times. When I went to purchase this album, they were side by side. So it was nothing special. I didn't have to hunt for it and I didn't have the copy without it. So to me, the extra songs are nothing special because I've always had them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't understand why they wasn't included on the vinyl. Um, hopefully, down the line, we'll see a like a cool. I think it would look awesome on gray vinyl, um, and maybe make it a double and include uh, the covers or maybe Dante's at least. That'd be that fun. would be awesome. That that would be cool. So, and it, it's something I I know we both follow eBay and stuff. I hate to see this is one of those albums that elude people because it's not out there. I hate to see Iced Earth just missing out on that income because there's so many people looking for it, and you can't find that under $50, $70. Well, the vinyl. It should be able to dystopia. Well, the vinyl. I don't, yeah, I don't know why you can't just go to Century Media, click it, twenty nine ninety nine, buy it, because there's so many people that need it for their collection. I think that's something that they've missed out on, and there's a few of them like that, but they need to do a, a two-disc version. Man, like, this, all this money and resources from Century Media making those really, making those little single picture discs, like, I don't care about them, you know, they, they're cool, I suppose, but I won't buy them. Give us Dystopia on vinyl, like a proper ultimate version of Dystopia on vinyl, please. That would be nice. You know, you know we talk about like reissues like oh yeah you know they they they, they need to reissue glorious burden framing and crucible not for me because i've got them and i don't really care about buying them again but for people that can't get them because they're so overpriced so but when it, there's people waiting on them but when it comes to a reissue that i want for me it's it's a reissue of dystopia with all the bonus tracks because I think mm -hmm. it's necessary. Like I said, number four is so Sword and Green. I feel it's forgotten. It's so good. One of the, probably one of the best songs on the record for me. And I, it just makes me sad. Well, I'm going to give you a little bit of the same thing you gave me for Democide. Sword and Green, I like it. I don't skip it in any way, but it's not even in my top six songs on that album. So 
fair enough. I mean, I, res- um, I mean, you know, I, I, I respect your opinion, but you're wrong. <laughs> Babylon is better than dystopia, in my opinion. Uh, no, it's not. You are incorrect. Uh, it's objective fact that dystopia is better. <laughs> if you're not a part of our Facebook group, I did do a poll recently on the favorite Stu Block era dystopia. album and dystopia. Dystopia destroyed. <laughs> It was dystopia, Land, Rubble man. Plagues, and then Curion, for anybody that didn't poor, know. Poor, poor okay. Curion. It was like the bottom. Poor, poor Curion. You're so number three. My number, my number three selection is the last selection from the Incorruptible album. It is the last song on the album. It's Clear the Way. Um, this is this song is just epic. I, I love the, the slow intro. And then the build up, and then the, the cool drum part that you're waiting for the guitar riff, and it, it's it's the best of the glorious burden era with the current era, and it's song writing 101. It's just perfect. I love those kind of war songs, and clear the way is just wow. It's it's an amazing song, and I like it. It's aged well. You know, it's not a song that I'm fatigued of hearing about. It's a longer song, but, you know, I listen to it, I think, three times a day. And when I was listening to it, and it's it's my favorite song off Incorruptible. Um, Clear the Way is partially just a great song, but mm-hmm. Stu, Stu raises it up with his vocals, and I couldn't imagine anybody else singing it. Um, Clear the Way is, to me, the best song off Incorruptible, and my number three track. Um, yeah, um, Clear the Way is a really good choice. Um, I, I for, for me, I think it's epic as fuck, and I really like Steve on it, but I, I think the song's too long for me. Um, I, I still I still listen to it, but I find myself skipping out a lot of the bagpipe stuff and actually skipping it to the actual point where there's vocals. Do you know what I mean? So for me, um, it, it's really good, but I feel it's overly long and has a lot of kind of like empty space where they could have been, they could have been a bit more creative. That's just me. You can kill me in the comments because it, well, it doesn't kill me in real life. It's fine. Uh, I am an Iron Maiden fan, and I am a fan of songs that are long myself. So that song doesn't bother me. Saying but, that, I, I the, the, you know, the, there is a band that, that I like that has released an album, and it's one song, and it's like fifty-two minutes. So I'm kind of being a bit of a hypocrite, but whatever. Uh, they're called Cult of uh, Cult of a Cult. They're a sludge bands. And they've put out an album called Anti Life. It's one song, <laughs> fifty-two minutes. <laughs> now, if, is that on uh, vinyl? How yeah. does that work on vinyl? Uh, they, they, they've split. They've yeah, they split the song into four songs. So it's so, uh, so, the, so, the, so the so the so the songs are like an t li fi. So Anti Life, but like split into four. So do you yeah, like the song? I mean. Is 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 one song better than other? Or are they all this pretty much great? What do you mean? <laughs> is this like, do you like like one part of it way more than the other, or is it pretty much see, these, all about? The see, for me, those kind of bands that have songs that long, it's it's more of an experience rather than like you're really paying attention. It's more of like a I'd have it in the background, and it would just like be kind of just like that kind of background, like immersed, immersive kind of. In kind of bands that's how I see those kind of bands that have songs that are like an hour long it's crazy uh-huh. but so yeah you are a hypocrite <laughs> aren't so we all three, when it concerns me clear the way clear the way called, number, uh, number three we spoke about it earlier it's so good it's called Dark City do you know that one do you, have you heard of it you might have heard of it it's, it's really good okay. I'll tell you what it's Dark City though as well is that um, if you've seen the film the film is incredible such an underrated 90s sci-fi film. It's a really good movie. I got it on Blu-ray. It's so good. But yeah, Dark City, uh, just like, like we've already mentioned it, like just the opening's really cool and uh, his vocals, at, his soft vocals at the beginning are amazing. His, his pterodactyl screams, sacrifice bit is just crazy good. Um, I love the melodies. Um, Search my mind, look for the... Oh, just, it's just the way he sings it. It's so catchy. And I just think it's... One of the best songs off of Dystopia. And I, I love the vocal. I just love it. It's so good. I, I agree with you. 
Great song, Dark City. Your number two, sir. My number two is my last selection off the Dystopia album. It is the title track, Dystopia. Um, perfect opening song. Holy, holy hell! It's it's a just you know it's heavy, it's fast. It's I remember, and we've talked about this several times. You know, you're in your into your fifth vocalist of your favorite band. And you haven't heard anything from them, and you put on your your CD of Stopia, and it comes on, and you're about halfway through the song, and you just take a sigh of relief, and you know that everything's going to be okay. Um, Dystopia is just a great song. I think it's one that is probably never going to leave the, the the set list live, and it shouldn't. Um, I love it. It's it's a a fantastic track. Not not one of just my favorites. Two tracks, just one of my favorite Ice Earth tracks overall. So number two for me is Dystopia. Uh, I'm going to hold off on my opinion of Dystopia. Uh, so my number two, uh, now my, num- my number two and number one kind of, this may sound like I'm, this may, what I'm going to say about this, my number two, it may sound like it should be my number one, but there's reasons my number one is my number one. But yeah, and my number two is uh, Ravenwing for Incorruptible. For me, this is uh, the best Stu has ever sounded on anything he's ever sung on. For me, uh, it's outstanding, and I think the the song is is outstanding, and I think that's help that helps bring out what Stu uh, what Stu has done for this song. I think the the, the the cadence, the melodies, everything about it is beautiful. Like, I don't think he sounds. He's, he, I don't think Stu has sounded this beautiful. I don't think I've used the word beautiful for Stu for Stu uh, when it concerns his vocals this song this is where he sounds beautiful it sounds immense I want to show I, if there was an Ice Derv song to show someone that wasn't into metal it would be Ravenwing because I think this song is is so is so layered and so um and so beautifully sung and it's so like kind of haunting and kind of soft in parts I think there's some I think people that don't not into metal really can kind of see find a lot of things to love about this song and I think Stu's vocals is probably the highlight as it, it it makes this song it makes his song uh, go from being great to being modern classic because it is it's a modern ice of classic it it should be it should never leave the set list and um, when they do tour again whenever that may be um and they uh, and then they, and they they come to your neck of the woods. And they come to my neck of the woods. I want to hear it live because I think it'll still be immense live as well. Uh, yeah, it was just it's it's yeah. It, I can't I can't get the words out, but you, you get the point. It's just outstanding. And Stu Stu is just on. Um, he, he's like on God tier. If you think of God tier vocalists, you think of Ronnie James Dio. You think of Matt Barlow. You think of Bruce Dickinson. I might with this song. I might have to put Stu Block up there as well because he's outstanding on Raven Wing. It's my number two. You know, it's an excellent selection. And even though that song didn't make my top ten, I, I love the the heck out of it. It's a, it's a great song. Um, it's just my the only problem of the ranking is it. And sometimes songs just hit you better. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. This one, I like a lot. I, I never skip it. I always love to hear it. Stu sounds great on it. It's just, to me, Incorruptible is so stacked that it, it just can't make my list. I mean, I could, could I see it on a greatest hits? Absolutely. It's it's a, a welcomed ballad type song. And we've, we've talked about kind of our fatigue with... Uh, watching over me if this took over for watching over me for a while i'd be okay with that it's it's a great song he does sound tremendous you mentioned like the song that you would play for a non-metal fan mine would be end of innocence okay cool just because just the the straight vocals i mean you could Stu has the vocals where and we talked about the uh his previous band that we're going to get to on um dang it what is it called again into eternity into eternity and he can go that metal route like he could do the the growl and he could do the the falsetto but also he he's got a voice where if you sat down with a couple of a piano and a couple acoustic guitars he could drop jaws with it with his range i mean he's mm-hmm. that 
gifted of a singer. And that was one thing when I heard Into Eternity, like as soon as he was announced for the Ice Earth role as the lead vocalist, of course I go to YouTube and I hear Into Eternity and I was like, whoa, that's way different. But John yeah. knows what he's doing. Yeah. I wasn't afraid because I knew that John, John's not going to pick somebody that can't do it. So I couldn't wait to, you know, you hear his voice and then you hear a song like End of Innocence and it's like, wow. You know, his range is is maybe bigger than anybody that's ever been in Nice Earth. So um, I agree with Raven Wing. It's an excellent choice. So, but his his range, and I would I would love to hear an acoustic Ice Earth set because he would nail it. So, all right, my number one favorite Stu Block era song is from No Surprise to Anybody, the Plagues of Babylon album, and it's Cthulhu. Um, nice. This is a song that just it's everything that I want in a song. You got the I love the the slow build up and it's catchy and it, it's it's big. It's not super long, but it feels epic to me. And it's always just, you know, the guitars are so just perfect riffage. Um, just a great, well written song, super catchy chorus. It's always been my favorite stew song ever since since a couple turns on it. So Cthulhu off Plagues of Babylon is my favorite Stu Block era song. If you put in all songs, though, it would be close because his version of Damien off Ancient Curion is up there too because that's my favorite version of that song. So Cthulhu, my number one. Let's hear your number one that no one's surprised about. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, uh just a pre just a pre just a pre uh preface this this entry this song for me is uh ties is is ties with the coming curse is my favorite ice surf uh, ice surf song of all time oh wow it it means the most to me because when i hear the intro to it all i hear is crowd going mad i hear the i hear the crowd going crazy I think of my very first Ice Earth show. I think of the very first time I put in Dystopia. This is Dystopia from Dystopia. And it, and I know I mentioned before about Ravenwing being the best vocal performance by Stu in his career of Ice Earth. I still believe that. I still stand by that. But when it comes to a song that just takes me back to memory lane of me going from being a crazy Ice Earth fan to jump making that transition to an obsessive crazy nerd Ice Earth fan Dystopia was a song like like we've mentioned before having that uncertainty of like you know oh Matt's gone uh, oh they've got this guy from this band oh he does death metal vocals oh, is he going to really work and then and then you hear you hear the, the chorus in this song uh, we find our way and he does the whole hold that way note he holds the note and he's just like what this is um yeah like this is his vocals on this are amazing these pterodactyl screams uh in the pre-chorus are amazing they're really hard to do i've tried it i can't do it they're really hard like really hard to do uh this probably has i'm just gonna say it has the greatest chorus of any ice Earth song ever it's the that it's the best it's the most singable most epic chorus i've ever written for a song uh, I'm always singing along to it. I always lose my voice trying to sing it because it's that it's that hard and that epic and that just crazy good. Uh, I, I can't express how how much I love it without it losing my mind, Chuck. Because it's just it's the perfect introduction to a new singer and to show us what he, I know. I know he done Dante's before that, but when it comes to an, a brand new original song at the time that introduces the new uh, introducing a new song with a new singer it's hard to do and I Earth and Stu Block just knocked it out of the park tenfold with Dystopia and it means the world to me I mean it, it takes me like I said it takes me back to my first I Earth show just that da, 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 like it's just man just wow is, is all I've got to say like it's outstanding well, well. Either one of these would be awesome greatest hits collections. 
I mean, mine would be a little bit better, but you know, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you could have that one for free. It's fine. <laughs> okay, so I know we both mentioned some uh, before we started uh, talking on the on film here that we had a couple uh, honorable mentions. I'll go ahead and do my three honorable mentions first. Mm-hmm. The three honorable mentions that were close but didn't make it are Great Heathen Army. I, it was it was close. I, it almost made the list, but it was just underneath um, Ravenwing, which we have already talked about. Yeah, and um, Anguish of Youth was nice. close. Cool man. So I, I love that. Love that. It's kind of in the same. Uh, Vocal ranges into Venison's, and I, I love that window for or that wheelhouse for Stu there. So those were my three uh, honorable missions. How about you? Uh, for me, it was uh, Black Flag, and that and that made your list. Uh, yeah, Black Flag almost just just why a smidge because I love that that falsetto. You know, uh, betray banishment. That whole that falsetto is just that almost tied it over, but it quite didn't. Anguish of Youth, uh, also. Um, I think it's the most natural he sounds on Dystopia, if we, if you want to say that. Uh, love that song. Um, and, and, a, and a bit of a deep cut from Plagues, which I still love, and it still is one of the songs the band has written that really captures uh, what the song's about, which is Parasite. Really like par- I like Stu's vocals on that as well, so that almost made the cut too. Like I think that's a really dark song as well. Uh, wow, yeah. nice Parasite. one. Parasite's good. Peacemaker was close too. So off of that album, but I'm a little partial Mate, to the album. Man, we can just we can go on and on. Right? I know. Like, he's, he's... And uh, and I know we've talked about Stu and John in this episode and a little bit about Luke, but you know this was a cool era because you had uh, Brent and Raphael, and then you got you know Luke. In there, you also got uh, yeah, Troy doing some of the best stuff he's done, Freddie, Troy, and then uh, Jake at the end. So, some really cool band members at this time, too. So, I've pulled up our uh, community page for for our community speak out. Um, Chris Knott said, Anthem, Cthulhu, and Clear the Way are the first that come to mind. Great songs off great albums. William White says, any new interviews coming? And also, Clear the Way, Anthem, and Black Flag. Anthem's another one that could possibly have made it, but it's just surrounded by too many other songs. Um, and I mentioned that we're doing our best to get John in soon, John Greeley, and also... Yeah. Uh, so we're doing our best to get those guys. Um, happy birthday, Chris Knotts, by the way. I know today is his birthday, although this will be a couple days late. Um, Lou, Lou Sass said in no particular order Dark City Equilibrium that's another one Dystopia Among the Living Dead Peacemaker Democide Iron Will is very overlooked in his opinion mm-hmm. Clear the Way Defiance and V Defiance is one that was really really good too uh, Adam Ortiz says I think Ravenwing is the best performance but I really enjoy Iron Will and End of Innocence we all know that Adam Ortiz's favorite Ice Earth album is Dystopia, so no surprises hear that. Um, Chris Powell says, Clear the Way is easily my favorite of the Stu Block era. I'm a bit of a Civil War guy, but even if it wasn't, that song is damn great. Well said, uh, Christopher. John Baylor, the top 10 Stu Block era songs in no order are Soyant Green. Uh, Brothers, forgot about that one. Uh, Cthulhu, Anthem, V, Clear the Way, Black Flag, Dark City, Seven Headed Whore, and uh, Ravenwing. And he also kind of noted all the movies that these are kind of based on. Uh, my Canadian buddy Jeff Budd said these are in no particular order, but capture my top 10 Stu Block songs in Iced Earth, Soyant Green, and of Innocence. Black Flag, Cthulhu, Clear the Way, Iron Will, Dark City, Dante's Inferno. He record he included the re recording and Peacemaker. We me and Jason totally agree that Dante's is if if we would have added on the list, it would have made it. 
mm-hmm. for sure in, in mind. Yeah. Um, Mike Scott also picked Dante's Anthem, Clear the Way, Cthulhu, Peacemaker, Dystopia, Black Flag, Black, Black Flag. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Seven Headed Horror, <laughs> and anything from Live and Ancient Curion. Yes, it's a live album. And there's other people's errors on it, but Stu fucking slays on it. Yes, he does. Um, Sean Green says Ravenwing, Peacemaker, Clear the Way, uh, Dystopia, End of Innocence, Plagues, Black Flag, The End are among my favorites. So he agrees with The End. Uh, Douglas Rosander says Clear the Way, Black Flag, The End, End of Innocence, Dark City, Seven Headed Horde, Democide. Great Heathen Army, Dystopian, Among the Living Dead. His is very similar to mine. Um, Stu is amazing at getting out his, into the character of the songs. Best ex- exemplified with Black Flag and Clear the Way. I totally agree. Brandon Stone, the new dad. Hope you're doing well, Brandon. Uh, Dystopia, V, Tragedy and Triumph, The End, Peacemaker, Cthulhu, Black Flag. <laughs> Spell check, Ravenwing, Seven Headed Whore, and Clear the Way. I do that all the time. I hate when my phone does that. Um, great. Um, and he goes into a long explanation there. Um, Lorcan Black wants to be on our podcast one day. We're going to try to get that. Um, Lens Gray, Dystopia, Clear the Way, Ravenwing are the ultimate phase from the Stu Blocks. And then the last one. Is James Adams in no particular order? Anthem, Anguish of Youth, End of Innocence, Iron Will, Cthulhu, The Calling, uh, Peacemaker, Seven Headed Horror, Ravenwing, and Clear the Way. So, a lot of a lot of similar ones to ours, but there's a few. Everybody's got their own dark or deep cut that they love. Hmm. So this was a, a really fun one to do, and uh, I wonder, are you surprised that? Century Media hasn't done a Greatest Hits 2 yet at this point? Um, I, th- I think they're making making their money through these picture discs. These yeah. picture disc singles that I don't care about for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't mind them, though. The way I look at it, I don't, I don't mind them because, you know, some things are for me, some things are not. And just because I don't, I don't want them necessarily, you but... Know, like, I don't mind them being out there. Like, yeah, you know, I'm not saying they shouldn't exist. I'm just saying that, like, for me, like, from what they're charging for them, I don't really want to pay the money for two songs I already have on multiple copies of CD and vinyl. Um, and have them on a... I mean, the pitch just looks cool. Like, the Ben Offering one looks really good. Um, but, like, the, the only reason I would buy them is to put them in frames and put them on the wall. I wouldn't listen to them. I'd have them right. as, dis- as display pieces. Yeah. But for what they're charging, I'm 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 gonna skip. What what hurts me on the on the selection is that the fact that they always come from Germany, and when you when you when you throw in the Germany factor, you almost double the price of the of the order and for the shipping. And right now, you'd be lucky if they're really shipping out to the US. You know what I mean? I have had a Blaze Bailey Live Iron Maiden disc in brazil now since march that's just sitting somewhere <laughs> i don't know where it's at but since then i haven't ordered anything overseas yeah me neither All, like... my ebay has been u.s since then until i get that cd and things get a little bit more back to normal my u.s packages are coming fine yeah but for some reason that one's been set in, in brazil since march it hasn't even left the country yet so it's like um, I've I've ordered a uh, you know the film Critters, right? Sure. Yeah, I, I I've ordered like a custom like proper like full size custom made prop like the guy the the, the artist he actually makes the prop uh, makes the actual critter with real hair and everything. And I, I ordered I ordered that in October. He said it's going to be about ten to twelve month build time. Yeah, and I messaged him I messaged him about two weeks ago and asked about because uh, he offers ex an expedite service so it means I'll pay a bit more money and he'll speed up the process I'll be first in line and then he'll get it out quicker and we were talking about it he goes yeah if you pay the, if you pay like it was like a hundred dollars if you pay a hundred dollars more 
uh, you'll be first in line, which means instead of instead of waiting three months, you'll be waiting two weeks to complete the order, and then I'll ship it out. And I was like, I'm from the UK, is it going to be a problem? They said to me, actually, yeah, don't pay that. Don't pay expedite because I can't ship anything international right now because they've cut off a lot of that. And I was like, well, shit. So I might not even be getting this. I might not be getting that on time either. So, um, But I think, like, like for those picture discs, I do think... Uh, I think I'd be safe to order them if I wanted them because they're coming from Germany. So I don't think it's a problem, Germany to the UK. But... Again, I don't really want them, so I think it's a Fair case. Of, I think it's a case for me. I think I'm just like I'm done when it comes to collecting for ice stuff. I think I've, I've, I've met, I've met a sat, 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 I've, I've hit that satisfaction wall where there's nothing else I really want that's going to make me hunt, hunt for it. Because the whole fun of collecting is 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 hunting for stuff, right? Now I, I still look at eBay all the time, just because. I've done it for the last three years, <laughs> but um, I, sometimes I, I know that there's people that are looking for things. So sometimes, and you saw this group or the uh, the post I put on there. Somebody was selling almost the entire vinyl collection on eBay, yeah, I saw that, yeah. and I posted it. My buddy Sean needed like seventy percent of it, and he's like, "I got like three copies on there. I don't know what I'm going to do with them." And I'm like, "Well, just put them on our group page. You know, somebody might snag them up." So. I always look for weird stuff on there, and I always look for live stuff. There's hardly ever any bootlegs, but there was a bootleg that uh, recently turned up from the uh, horror show. Did you see that on our group page? Uh, it's it had only the first two sets, and it's got a really it, it's from a radio station, and it sounds super cool. There's only a couple songs on YouTube, but there's a link of it on our page and. Uh, a buddy of mine from the group is sending me the two CDs of it. And I guess there was a three sets. They did like older, you know, two sets. And then the third set was horror show stuff. Mm -hmm. But the, the radio station didn't air that. So that doesn't exist. Huh. But I got those two coming this week. I remember, so um, look I remember John talking about that, about the three set yeah. horror show. Uh, yeah. It's only fucking epic as fuck. Like, really so, it, and it's got the uh, super version of Curse the Sky on there with Matt. So, but I, I got that on the way. So anyway, I, I always look, but I'm kind of at a, I've got everything. So, mm. you know, there, there's some of those reissues I'd want a, 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 a new uh, dystopia vinyl for sure. But yeah, the the singles on the vinyl they're they're okay. But you know, I, I'd rather. I'd much rather have them issue Dante's. Now, if, if it was the Dante's Inferno single, I, I'd already show you my receipt. Yeah, yeah. Or if or if it was some of the other songs that, you know, that is not on vinyl yet, I'd be like, yes. But, you know, I know people that's bought them, and there's a lot of people that love their um, Alive in Athens one, which is great. I don't know, like, may, maybe like, you know, maybe in six months or a year, I might get that that collecting itch are back and then I'll be looking for them and then I'll be sad for myself because I won't be able to find them because they're limited but you never know like right now there's nothing telling me buy them buy them because usually when something pops up um, I usually get that like when the when the end of the realm stuff came in I had to order it immediately you know what I mean oh, oh absolutely well and part of it is because I've got the unknown of the the John book thing that's coming in June. Right. So yeah. it's it's got the uh, what's the pay system? Uh, what's it called? It's on. Uh, it's not a, uh, a prepay. It's called something else. A Kickstarter. Kickstarter, and that's coming in in June. So I don't want to put eighty bucks into two singles when you know mm -hmm. I could keep that aside for the book. Yeah, yeah. Which I can't. I can't wait for the book. So. So anyway, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be definitely uh, donating money to that now. Yeah. So this, this was a fun. <clears throat> I was gonna say like, um, this could be really cool to get something that's not music from John. This could be that's something completely new, and I'm, yeah. I'm excited for that, man. I'm excited to. Cause I don't think I've got any ice stuff. There's not, there's not been any ice stuff books at all, and I think that's gonna be something completely, completely cool. 
I have a few Purgatory comics if you count that, but yeah, so I do don't. I. So do I. I have some Purgatory. I have that as well, but that's not Ice Death, though, is it? It's just a... No, it's, it's Tory. Just, it's just Tory. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, this was a fun episode. Jason, I enjoyed uh, revisiting, and uh, if you heard some of these songs, either from my list or Jason's, that you're not familiar with, uh, look them up. You might uh, spend a weekend with them, and they might move up your list. So. Soil and Green. Become familiar with it, because it's amazing, and no one talks about it. I love it so much and after you listen to that listen to the end yeah do so. that. or compile compile our lists into a playlist and listen to the whole thing yeah listen to the exactly or listen to all three albums back to back it's, it's anyway, <laughs> anyway 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 any which way you want to uh, consume the stew book era you do so you can go backwards you know, you can go Incorruptible, Plagues, Dystopia. You can go Dystopia, Plagues, Incorruptible. You can go Plagues, Incorruptible, Dystopia. It could be any order that you want. Uh, oh, but yeah, it's uh, it's been a great era for for us Ice Surf fans. It's like it's the, it's the shot in the arm the band needed. It's really good. Stu, Stu is great. You know, we've, we've, we've had new Matt stuff. We've had new Gene stuff. You know, Tim Tim Owens has had new stuff forever, all the time, because he's in about fifty million bands. We need we need new Stu Block stuff now. I think I think it's time. We need we need Stu Block needs to be needs to get back in the chair and give us some. I'm, I'm hoping some stuff as things kind of get back to normal in the world that we could send him over to uh, Indiana, USA, and let's get something going. I don't care if it's an EP, uh, whatever. We need Stu and Stu and John together ASAP. Please escort him over there, please. Let's get this started now. If uh, if they can send him over to Indianapolis and they go, right, we only have time to record one song, what song would you want them to record? <laughs> um, A new song. Uh, yeah, I suppose. That'd be cool. But what about, what about a re-record? That's too hard. Don't, well, I don't want to do it to that hard. because we're going to be doing something to that similar next episode. Are we? I forgot. Oops, my bad. Anyway, guys, we have been podcast in stone. I have been Jason, and guess what? The beard is back, guys. The beard is back. Get in. I've been joined by by the incomparable Chuck Hoskins, and as always, punch the like button, hit subscribe to uh, see more episodes from us here at Podcast and Stone. Keep upping the iced, as always. Not iced coffee, iced earth. Know the difference, guys. Know the difference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hit the notification bell to be notified for more episodes from us. Until then, we'll see you next time. Stay metal, because metal lives, my friends. See you later.